In this video, we're going to look at Unit 7, Lesson 7, which is circles in triangles. So we're going to work on constructing the largest possible circle inside of a triangle. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to take a triangle and draw the largest triangle possible. So you will know that it is the largest triangle possible, or sorry, the, long, the largest circle possible to draw inside of this triangle. So first, what I want you to do is on page 187, just go ahead and use your compass and draw the largest circle inside of these two triangles that you possibly can. So just play around with it. Try and get your compass the um, widest you possibly can to still be able to draw a circle fully inside of these triangles. Then you can um, come back to the video and we'll discuss it. All right, so you could certainly, you know, just start um, by drawing a circle. So that definitely fits inside of here. Um, but could we get a larger circle to fit inside of here? And so you could just keep drawing. So that one kind of crept out of the um, triangle, so, but it looks like it could still fit in there if I just moved it up a little bit. So let me delete this and I just moved my compass up a little. And um, so still outside of it. Okay, but certainly could get that one to fit in if we got the center in the correct spot. So that one looks pretty good. Okay, it's hitting kind of almost all three sides, pretty, pretty big circle there. And you could just um, then try in this next one. So maybe you kind of start it over here. Okay, that one's too big. Okay, it goes outside of it. So we need to either kind of move it or make the um, circle smaller. So it looks like maybe that one could fit, just needs to move over a little bit. Okay, could certainly fit, just needs to move up. But you just keep trying to draw some of these circles and see the largest one that you can possibly fit. So I'm just going to move that up a little and I'm going to open it. Okay, that one's definitely bigger than the red one and looks like it pretty close to fits in, might be a little bit big. Um, but so we're going to take a look at how we actually find the largest circle possible that would go in there and we find the actual largest, not just the largest that we can find. So the idea here is we're going to construct two angle bisectors to find the in center. Then we need to construct the perpendicular segment to the side, which will be the radius of our inscribed circle. So in order to be successful at this, we're going to have to be able to do two different constructions. One is the angle bisector and one is a perpendicular bisector. So to do the angle bisector, remember you set your compass on the vertex of the angle. You draw an arc. Let me make this thinner. You draw an arc that crosses the angle. Then at each of the intersection points, you draw another circle. And you can open this um, to the width here if you want to. It can be larger than that too. Um, but then draw a circle around this intersection and the same size circle around this intersection then connect the vertex through the intersection. So then that's going to be your angle bisector. You can connect both intersections, um, but it'll just go straight through that angle. So you're, you're also able to just do the vertex. Then constructing a perpendicular line through a point not on the line. So for this one, we start by um, getting an arc that crosses the line. Then we will open our compass to the width of that intersection. So set your compass on one intersection point, open it to the width of the other, draw a circle, then move your compass to the other intersection point and draw the same sized circle. Then you're going to connect these intersection points and that will give you your perpendicular line that goes through that point. So it's going to be perpendicular here and we can see that it goes through that point. So now when we put this into a triangle, this is what it's going to look like. So you want to construct two angle bisectors. And the reason that you're going to construct these two angle bisectors 
is then you'll get where they cross and that'll be your in center. So we'll make them pick any two angles you want to construct the angle bisector of. So I'm going to do this one. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to make this a little bit larger. So then draw a circle around there, move to the other intersection point, draw a circle around there. Then you'll connect these intersections. Okay, and you can just go through the vertex of the angle. So here's the vertex of the angle, and I'm just going to draw through those intersection points. Then you're going to do the angle bisector of another angle, whichever one you choose. I'm going to do this one. And so just um, draw an arc that crosses both sides. Then you can go to each intersection. And again, for this part, you can move this if you want to. So you can put it on the intersection or you can make it wider. But when you draw your circle here, then it needs to be the same around the other intersection point, the same size. Then connect the vertex through the intersection there. And what you'll get is your in center. So where those cross is your in center. So the in center in this case is right here. And this is going to be the point that's equidistant from all the sides. But remember, the distance to a side is the perpendicular segment. So we can't just eyeball that. So we're going to actually construct the perpendicular line. So this is where we're going to do an arc through a side. And you can do any side you want. So if you want to do it through this side or through this side or through this side, just pick one. It doesn't matter. Um, and so I'm going to whoops, make this thinner. And I'm going to draw an arc through here. And it looks like my compass is a little off. Make sure it's on your center point. So I'm going to draw this arc. Then at the intersection, I'm going to open my compass and to the next intersection. And this could be bigger. It just has to be wider than half of this. I'm just going to open it to exactly that distance. Draw a circle. Then move over to your other intersection point and draw the exact same size circle. Then I'm going to connect where those blue circles intersect. Okay, so here's one intersection, here's the other. This is the perpendicular line that goes through that point. This is going to help you determine the radius. So now the radius is just going to go along that same line, but just to the edge of the circle. So it's or the edge of the triangle. So it's going to go from the in center just to this side. And then we know that that's a perpendicular segment. So that represents the distance from the in center to the side of the circle. So this is how wide your radius needs to be. So we'll set our compass on the in center, open it to the width of that radius, and then we'll be able to draw our inscribed circle. Now remember, this will hit all the sides. You might be just slightly off if you have a, when you have a little bit of human error, okay? And mine always moves a little bit on the digital screen, so mine's always just slightly off. Um, but that's going to give you a circle that hits all or that hits all the sides of this triangle. Look on um, this applet here. So we're going to take a look here. And um, so we're actually going to construct some angle bisectors. So first thing I'm going to do is put the um, angle measures in here so we can see the measures. Then if we click on here, we can go ahead and construct an angle bisector. And it tells us down here to just select the three points of the angle. So I'm going to go here, here, and here. And then it will give me the angle bisector. And as I change, if I want to change the size of the angle, you can see that that angle bisector will change with it. Okay, so we're going to do this um, angle bisector of the other angles because what we're doing is constructing the in center like we did in the last lesson. So the in center is where all the angle bisectors meet at. So now I did the angle bisector of this angle. So we know the in center is here. Um, I'm just going to construct the third one here just because it's pretty easy on the technology. So just pick the three angles. 
uh, or the three vertices, and it'll put the angle bisector there. So now what we've done is we've created the in center. So this point where they all cross is the in center. So I clicked on the point, clicked on the intersection. And as we kind of move these around, you'll see that that in center moves with it. So we can play around and look at a bunch of different types of triangles. You'll see that the in center is always inside the triangle, no matter what type of triangle we make. So then what we want to do is actually use this in center. It's the center of the inscribed circle. Okay, and the inscribed circle will be the circle that touches each of these sides once. So what we need to do is figure out the distance from this point to the edge, distance from this point to the edge, distance from this point to the edge. Those will be our radii. And remember that the distance from a point to a line is a perpendicular segment. So we're going to construct a perpendicular segment here. Okay, so here's perpendicular through a point to a line. So I'm going to select the point and I'm going to select the line and that's going to create the perpendicular line. Now, I don't want to get confused with everything. So I'm just going to draw a segment on here from here. Oops, where did that go? All right, we're going to draw a segment and it's going to go from this point to where that perpendicular line hits the side. Then I'm going to hide this line, okay? And if you click on it and then you push Control H, it'll hide the line. So then we just have that line segment. And then that's actually going to be the radius of your circle. So if you take and draw a circle, you can connect this center to this point, And then we can see that that circle goes around to each edge. It hits each edge once. So this, whoops. So this circle here is the largest circle possible to be created within that triangle. And if we move this, we'll see it just kind of moves with it, the different types of triangles. So you can make different triangles. So this one doesn't take up very much of the area. There's all this kind of extra space over here. This one takes up most of it, quite a bit of it. Okay, so we can try and get a circle that takes up more and more of the area, less and less. Okay, and as this triangle gets bigger, the circle can get bigger. But you see all these different things coming into play here. So I'm just going to um, construct... Uh, the rest of these perpendicular bisectors so I can get the or perpendicular lines so that I can get these segments on here quick. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to take a screenshot of this so that I can put it on the other screen. So pick the point, pick the line, and it'll create a perpendicular line there and then I'm just going to draw a segment from the center to where that line crosses the side and then just hide this by pushing control H. All right so I'm just going to screen grab this and take it with me over to the other page just so I can put it in the notes. But that would be your largest um, circle possible is from constructing the in center and then getting the circle. Um, remembering that in order to get the radius of the circle, we need to make sure that we grab um, the perpendicular segment to that side. And then we also know that that's the only point that this circle touches over here because it's perpendicular. So this side right here is tangent to the circle. So this side is tangent because it's perpendicular at the radius. This side over here is tangent because it's perpendicular to this radius. And then um, same with this bottom one. You can kind of see you're getting um, a, a few different triangles in here. So you can kind of see how this is separating some of this out. These angle bisectors are kind of splitting these 
sides up. So you see that one or splitting this triangle into a couple more triangles. So we get kind of these other little chunks of space that we saw in the last video. Also, when we were looking at where points um, were closer to, so which sides points were closer to based on the angle bisector. But you can kind of see that we get these little triangles here. And you'll see um, that the side is kind of like a base, and then this radius would be the height. So you see this as the base of, the tri of that triangle and then this as the height of the triangle. So if we wanted to find the area, we could do base times height divided by two for each of these little triangles. All right, in 7.3, we're taking a look at um, equilateral centers. So we have an equilateral triangle here, meaning that all of these sides are congruent to each other. The angle bisectors are drawn in. Um, so these dotted lines are the angle bisectors, which means that point D is the in-center. So what we want to try and prove is that when we have an equilateral triangle, that the in-center is not just the in-center, but it's also the circumcenter. So in order to do this, we probably want to remember what a circumcenter is. So remember that the circumcenter is the center of the circumscribed circle. So it would be the center of the circle that goes through all three of these vertices. So in order to prove that it's the circumcenter, we would need to prove that all these green lines are actually the same. Okay, so that AD is congruent to BD is congruent to CD. If that happened, then this would also be the circumcenter. So right now we know it's the in-center, so we know it's equidistant from the sides. Let's see if we can prove that it's equidistant from the vertices. So see if you can figure that out, pause the video, then come back and I will talk you through it. All right, so there are certainly different ways you could go about proving this. One would be to look at transformations. Another would be to look at using triangle congruence. So I'm just going to talk through um, the triangle congruence one in this video. If you did use transformations, that's fine. So we do have an equilateral triangle, which means that all of these angles are also equal. So we've got um, equiangular as well. And I'm just going to switch screens here. Um, and so let me kind of re-get a couple of these things on here. So we were given that it's equilateral, right? So we're given this. So we know that all of these sides are the same. And so then that means that, um, okay, so given the triangle is equilateral, we also know that it is equiangular. meaning that each of the angles, okay, so each of the larger triangle angles is 60 degrees, which means the angle bisectors create 30 degree angles. So all of these angles here would be congruent. So the angle bisector is going to split all of these into congruent angles. So each of these little angles is 30 degrees, meaning that they're all congruent. So therefore, the smaller triangles, um, which are A, C, D, um, B, C, B, D, and ABD are all congruent by angle side angle congruency. So we see that each of these triangles, each of these littler triangles has two angles and the side in between them congruent to each other. So that means that each of those triangles are congruent. Okay, so then since we have, um, congruent triangles, 
segment AD would be equal to segment CD would be equal to A segment BD because they are all corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Okay, so this, each of these sides then is corresponding to one another, so they would in fact all be equal. Okay, so what we just said is that these are all equal to each other, that creates a circumcenter. So if these are equal, then we have a circumcenter. So since point D is equidistant from A, B, from points, A, B, and C, it is the circumcenter. So it is the circumcenter and it is the incenter. And you didn't have to write out all of that. You could have done some different shorthand for that, but that's just, um, I just typed it all out since I can type on here. Um, so does this work for a triangle that isn't equilateral? Okay, so would we be able to prove those are congruent um, on a non-equilateral triangle? Would it be the same? No. Would the inscribed and the what would the inscribed and circumscribed circles look like? So let's take a look over here. Well, is this the same picture? Okay, we should be able to draw the circle. Okay, going to the sides. So there's the inscribed circle, and then we can do the one going to the angles. So there's the circumscribed circle, and so they actually are what are called concentric circles since they have the same center. So they're just like on top of each other almost. So they're, they're called, the term for it is a concentric circle. And how would the perpendicular bisectors of the sides relate to the um, segments already drawn? Well, the perpendicular bisector would just be an extension of the angle bisectors. So the angle bisector and the perpendicular bisector end up being the same. Since we know that D is perpendicular, it's um, the distance to the edge, okay, is the same all the way around. And remember that distance is perpendicular. And then this, the in center and the circumcenter are identical. So the angle bisectors and the perpendicular bisectors are the exact same segment in this case. All right, so comparing and contrasting circumcenter and in center. So they're both centers of circles. Okay, so they're certainly both centers of circles. They're both equidistant from places. Okay, but the circumcenter is equidistant to the vertices where the in center is equidistant, whoops, to the sides. Um, the circumcenter can be inside, outside, or on the circle. where the in-center can only be in the circle. And the the um, circumcenter is from the perpendicular bisectors, the in-center is from the angle bisectors, so definitely there's some bisectors happening. Here the sides are being bisected, here the angles are being bisected. Okay, so depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to be equidistant from sides of a triangle, you would want in center. Or like we've talked about, trying to draw the largest triangle in a shape, or sorry, the largest circle in a triangle, then you would want the in center. If you're trying to figure out um, equidistant from three points, like we've looked at in previous lessons with city planning, if we're trying to build a school or a supply station, or um, a shopping center that's equidistant from three like towns or three places, then you'd want the circumcenter. 
But if you want to be equidistant from these edges, like if these were roads, okay, then you would want to build, do the in center. So depending on what you want. All right, then you can write this on your reference chart. And then here's the summary. So if we draw congruent segments representing the distance from the in-center to the triangle sides, so we know how to construct the in-centers with angle bisectors. So then if we draw in these congruent segments to the sides, that'll give us the radius of the inscribed circle. So then we would see that DE, DF, and DG are all congruent because they are radii of that inscribed circle. And that is the largest possible circle that you can draw into a triangle. So if you need the largest circle possible or you need it to be equidistant from the sides, then you wanna construct the in-center so that you can get that inscribed circle. And then that also means that these sides are all tangent to the circle since we see the radius is perpendicular there. All right, so in this one, in your cool down, you can um, try this cool down using what you learned today. If you have questions or are struggling, make sure that you reach out to your teacher.